What's up guys, this is Crypto with James talking to you today about Osmosis. Osmosis is effectively a DEX, well it's a DEX on uh, the Cosmos uh, ecosystem. I like this. Um, there's been some odd price action that does raise a red flag or two. Uh, but <clears throat> generally, look, I'm bullish on DEXs because I think everything that's happened with Centralized exchanges this past year means the DEXs are going to have a really solid run in the next bull cycle. Um, I also want to cover what happened with CPI data and the uh, the hearing in front of Congress regarding FTX because uh, that was a mess. Um, so all CPI data and the FTX stuff all has real big consequences for the overall market. So there's something that needs discussing there. So pay attention to this video, guys. Before I get into it though, if you are new to the channel, <clears throat> you don't know me or why you should listen to me, it's all fair. So these are the first 26 coins that I spoke about on this channel. They're also the first 26 coins I owned when I made the channel. And had you just put in a hundred bucks into each of these coins when I released videos about them, and then you'd ignore them for two years, done everything possibly wrong as an investor, you would still be in profit for like 9.2k, doing everything wrong. From a $2,600 investment, net profit, 9.2K. But if you just sold these coins last year like I did, when the markets were absolutely rocketing up, you could have made 123K. Huge difference between doing the right thing and the wrong thing. And that's from a $2,600 investment. Now these, like I said, I sold these last year. These are not the coins I own anymore. If you want to see the coins I own, you can go to copymycrypto.com. Uh, the link's on the screen. On that site, I share my portfolio. I release videos on a daily basis talking about the markets. Um, if that interests you, a lot of people just go on because they want to get into crypto but don't know where to start and they copy along. Uh, you can see the history of success just on the spreadsheet. The fact is, is in 2020, there was not a single YouTuber out there talking about Phantom, talking about its potential. I did a Udemy course entirely devoted to Phantom, saying it would 100x or more. Now, had you put just two grand into Phantom when I did that Udemy course, you'd have been a millionaire. Phantom went up 677 times. I'll find another Phantom. When I do, it won't be a Udemy course. I will just go onto the site, tell the members, I found this coin. This is why, these are the many reasons I love this and think this has got huge potential. This is what percentage of my money I'm putting in. And they can copy a lot. It's like having a smart kid in class that gets straight A's. You just look over his shoulder, you copy his answers, you get the same marks as him, but you've done them as well. That's what Copy My Crypto is. So if that interests you guys, the link's on screen, go read the site now. And let's talk about Osmosis. <clears throat> so Osmosis is priced at 91 cents, very high market cap for, you know, 440 million, no, 450 million. Um, all time high was a little over 11 bucks. Uh, and that was in the February of uh, March, technically, of this past year. Osmosis has not been around that long. Um, and it's an interesting one. Now, <coughs> the fact that we saw sort of this huge pump, you know, in December, uh, and then again in March, is surprising because obviously around March, the market started tumbling anyway. Um, and that pump doesn't that pump in particular doesn't doesn't make sense to me. Um, now since then, prices obviously capitulated quite massively, um, and volume has also capitulated quite massively because we did we were sort of when it launched and for the several months after. You know, hundreds of million, well, 40, 50 million plus daily volume. Now we're down to 13 million. Um, so the volume is decided, like decisively worse. Um, <clears throat> now, Osmosis is a DEX on Cosmos. Um, and they're part of uh, the, well, they're. they're interoperable with all of the blockchains because they're part of the IBC. Now, 
Osmosis offers non-IBC assets bridged from Ethereum and Polkadot ecosystems as well. Um, and what they're based on is the original balancer pools, which uh, are more sustainable with concentrated liquidity. So it's better for trading and it's better for liquidity provision experience. It means you're, better, you're probably going to be more likely to be able to, be, to sell the investments that you've got through uh, Osmosis pools. Um, and as an app chain DEX, Osmosis has great control over the full blockchain stack than normal DEXs that have to follow the code of their parent chain. What this means is obviously that they can start making alterations uh, and, and improvements to their DEX without um, unnecessary sort of coding red tape. Um, so they have something called the development uh, of superfluid staking, which is an improvement to proof of stake security. This allows uh, the Osmo token in an in a liquidity pool position to add to chain security, and as a re result, earn more staking rewards for doing so. So, what that does is obviously increase security because it means that a liquidity pool position is adding to chain security. So it's as secure as it could be for a proof of stake because it's better than a normal proof of stake in terms of security. Um, now, there, there are cross-chain decks and they have a trading suite that connects all chains over IBC, which is obviously a good thing because that effectively enables developers to uh, create a more bespoke uh, ecosystem with lending credit margin and fee on ramps. Um, what I like about this is fundamentally they are better than the AMMs that are out there right now. They've got customizable liquidity pools. That is quality. Um, and you can see from this site, look, you know, they talk about their interchain liquidity lab. Uh, in terms of total value locked, it's really quite weak. You know, 167 million is not amazing by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but you know, it's, I suppose that you would put that at about a quarter of its <coughs> overall market cap. So that's not too bad, I guess. Trading volume is not great, um, but they've not been up and running for that long. I would want to. I wouldn't want to see that dropping below a sort of million, two million dollars at any point. That would concern me. Um, so what, again, is good about uh, Osmosis is this, they've introduced some people to stable swaps as well. So Osmosis, um, so their stable swaps are the opportunity for people to just literally swap stable coins uh, very simply, very easily. Um, and it is just their protocol for trading stable coins. The notion behind this was that Osmosis is becoming the main venue where Cosmos users can access and trade in the wider range of stable coins. Um, obviously, that's not drawn as much as many users as one as they hoped. Um, but I think, given the uncertainty around uh, some stable coins, and given the uncertainty around the overall markets having a place where you can go and just start trading and swapping some stables is pretty good. It's generally pretty damn good. Um, and you can see from the overall uh, layout of the DEX, it's very similar to DEXs that you've probably used previously. Um, and you can see that you can stake Osmosis via uh, the Kepler wallet, um, or rather Kepler app. Sorry, um, and you've got all the validators. You can see the the APRs. The APRs are pretty damn good. They're not bad at all. Commission wise, you know these validators are not taking huge commissions. Uh, well, some of them are apparently. Uh, ten percent, bloody hell! Who accepted ten percent? Yeah. Okay. So, and if you're ever staking it, watch out for the commissions because that's ridiculous. You shouldn't be losing ten percent. Um, but overall, look, Osmosis, very functional, very straightforward, very, very, very easy decks to use. 
Um, you can see how much that they've integrated so far. It's not looking too bad at all. Um, you know, pretty pretty large selection of uh, cryptos that can be tradable. Um, it's looking all right. It's looking down. You know, it's looking very easy to use, very straightforward. I think users overall are probably going to like this. But I will point out a couple of things. Firstly, look, it's a new dex. So downside risk is a lot higher on a new dex than, than a, a dex that's had, been up and running for a while. So I would be, so you should acknowledge that there is a decent shot. This has got far, far lower to go. Would not be surprised to see this below 30 cents in a matter of a few months. Um, but in terms of entry point, that would probably be a damn good entry point um, for osmosis because I do think this has got the shot of rallying back to around that 10 bucks level. Because yet again, guys, I do, I do want to reiterate something. And I'll keep reiterating, but centralized exchanges have burned, and centralized exchanges, or, you know, if you want to talk about Celsius as a scam, you can talk about it as a scam. Um, but these places have burnt a lot of bridges. They've damaged a lot of individuals, and those individuals that have been damaged by Celsius or Voyager or BlockFi or FTX are going to be far, far, far more likely to trade on DEXs than they are on centralized exchanges. So DEXs have a run in them. Now, the people that have been burnt are the ones most likely to trade the DEXs. I've said this before as well, people have a short-term memory, though if you haven't been burnt personally by a DEX, and those individuals that haven't been per burnt personally by, DEX, by, by a centralized exchange, sorry, um, are gonna forget that these things happened in a couple of years because the, the excitement around the bull cycle will happen once again and people will be like, oh, you know, I want to get on. I will trade on Binance because Binance are introducing all these low cap coins or KuCoin because KuCoin are the first to post uh, new Polkadot cryptos or whatever. So centralized exchanges will still end up having their run. The DEXs will have a run off of the back of the amount of people that have been burned by them this past year. <clears throat> so, development of the DEXs, growth in terms of user base are key to watch. If Osmosis doesn't grow their user base, they won't hit $10. So, I'd be watching that very, very carefully, seeing how trading volume changes over time, seeing how many, how many swaps <clears throat> are changing over time is important. If you're spotting that that is on a general upward trajectory, and then the amount of swaps that are going on up the trajectory, even though the volume may be falling, that's still a decent sign because it means daily transactions are going up, even though volume is dropping. So people are still using it at a massive rate, they're just maybe trading less money. Um, and that's data that you really want to pay attention to. Data, data, data. It's key for success. Whether it's a DEX, whether it's a DAP, whether it's a game. Data will tell you what's growing, what's being successful. So pay attention to that stuff, guys. And tell me what you think. Do you think you can do a $10 run? I would say yes, but based entirely upon growth. And if they don't have growth, of course they won't. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like the video. If you're a returning viewer, hit the subscribe button. Want to get the amount of subscribers up, the amount of people that haven't subscribed but watch this channel all the time down. Um, these videos will make you money and it helps the channel. So do a good thing, hit the subscribe button. Um, and guys, if you want to see the coins that are in my portfolio right now, go to copymycrypto.com. On that site, I share my portfolio. Members get updates anytime I buy or sell a coin. We have tutorials set up so that anyone that's brand new to crypto doesn't know where to start and watch them and they will know how to get into crypto. Same ones I send friends and family. And I'll just repeat it, guys. Look. No one, no YouTuber on the planet was talking about Phantom in 2020, but me. I did a Udemy course entirely devoted to Phantom, saying this is going to be the best investment of the year. It will 100x or more. It did a 677x. I will find the next Phantom, the next coin that can do that. 
The members will know about it straight away. I will tell them what percentage of my money I'm putting in. They can copy along, make the same gains. If you want to make 100 times your money or more, you've got to go read the site, guys. The link's on screen. Um, and last couple of things. So, CPI data came in uh, better than expected, although this is exactly what I predicted on my site. I said this was going to, the date, CPI data was going to be better. I also predicted the exact point that Bitcoin would hit yesterday off the back of this positive news that I was expecting. Now, CPI data was good. You know, core CPI was about 0.1% better than expected. Um, month on month inflation was 0.3% uh, better this past month as well uh, than, than October. Um, <clears throat> all of that has obviously resulted in a pretty positive market bounce. Now the Fed are doing their meeting and their press conference today. So the Fed data will come out this evening and then <clears throat> um, they will then go on and do a press conference. Key things to watch out for are if Chair Powell signals uh, that another step down in the pace of hikes is likely, that's going to be a more positive market reaction. If the Fed signals that the policy rate will need to be raised to a higher peak um, in 2023, that's going to have a negative impact on the market. Um, it's pretty clear that there's going to be a 50 basis point hike today. Uh, if, if there was a 25, expect markets to rally like mad. If there was 75, expect the markets to tank like mad. Um, but there is probably going to be a short squeeze uh, for the US dollar heading into the end of the year. Uh, if the dollar drops, the risk assets will rise. So uh, it will be an interesting day. Obviously, watch. I, I always recommend this. Anyone should, if anyone's watching the press conference, have the minute by minute charts of Bitcoin up on TradingView when you're watching the press conference because it's fascinating if you're a nerd like me. You can, you can learn about like exactly what the market sentiment is in real time about exactly what Chairman Powell is saying. It gives you much better insight as to the overall markets by doing something like that. Because um, it is going to be an interesting day. <clears throat> also, uh, the current CEO of FTX um, was... Uh, in front of the House uh, Financial Services Committee. Um, he said to the Congress, the, the panel from Congress, um, there was no record keeping whatsoever using bookkeeping software like QuickBooks to track the multi billion dollar portfolio <coughs> that was held by FTX. This is really just old fashioned embezzlement. This is just taking money from customers and using it for your own purpose. No sophisticate, not sophisticated at all. Sophisticated, perhaps in the way they are hiding something, frankly, right in front of their eyes. This is just plain old embezzlement. Old school, old school. Um, that's the current CEO who has taken over from Sam Bankman Freed, who was arrested in the Bahamas yesterday. Oh, sorry, Monday. Um, the, uh, uh, the CEO has, and I don't know if it was him or Bankman Freed, have also said, uh, you are not going to get your money back. It, like, uh, or this, they've basically said not everyone will get their money back, which is obviously the case. They have screwed everyone. Um, so if you've had funds on FTX, uh, you know, it might be worth reaching out to a lawyer, but fundamentally because they've done the Chapter 11 bankruptcy filings, um, there is now a very, very long and drawn out process. This FTX fallout will probably take uh, a few years to resolve itself. I don't think we're going to see anything quick about this. SEC are also, uh, and the DOJ have also issued arrest warrants for Sam Bankman Freed. He will face trial for uh, the fraud that he's committed. He probably will go to prison. It will probably be quite a nice prison. If you guys have ever seen Wolf of Wall Street, um, and you saw the prison that Jordan Belfort ends up at, um, you know, he even says, I forgot I had money. And then, you know, the prison that he was in had tennis courts. And it will probably be something similar for Sam Bankman Freed, which is 
a disgrace, but it is unfortunately the reality. But yeah, this this uh, <coughs> House Financial Services Committee hearing was a, just a shit show. It was exactly what we all realized. We've all realized for the last couple of months is there was mass is fraud on a mass scale. It was embezzlement on a mass scale, um, and yeah, it's yeah, it, it, it's it's bad. And even FTX CEO said Sam Bankman-Fried lied when he tweeted that the company has enough to cover all client holdings. And when he was asked about it, he said, uh, uh, "Ray said so." Ray was asked, so, was, uh, so that statement was false, and, and the current CEO replied, yes. So there is no funds left, there is no money, um, and yeah, I, don't, I think this is going to drag on for a very, 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 very long time. Um, if, you are, if you do have funds on FTX, good luck, I hope, I hope you can uh, figure out a resolution. But I don't think that's going to be coming anytime soon, folks. Uh, and yeah, that's it for me. But this, this FTX fallout, this is again why I believe your DEXs like Osmosis can do the runs that I'm talking about. But they do have to grow. I always want to put that qualifier in. If they're not growing and they're not growing their user base, they won't have that success. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye.